The first high sugar fruit that pretty much everyone is eating too much of is banana. One medium sized banana has about 15 grams of sugar and pretty minimal fiber, only about three grams of fiber. And what's mind blowing to me is that a lot of these like trendy healthy smoothie places are charging about 12 to $15 for a smoothie that uses about two to three bananas in it. That's about 30 to 45 grams of sugar just coming from the banana. Not to mention any of the other ingredients that might be added in. This is why if I'm using banana for a smoothie, I stick to around a half of a small banana, but some people need to completely remove the banana altogether depending on how carbohydrate sensitive you are. And if you do rely on bananas and smoothies for the creamy texture, some really great low slash zero sugar options include half a cup of frozen cauliflower rice and half of an avocado. And it's important to note that some people can tolerate slightly higher amounts of sugar and still achieve a weight loss goal while others just can't. This all comes down to not only the individual's carbohydrate sensitivity, but also whether or not you're in a state of insulin resistance. So if you're very carbohydrate sensitive or if you're very insulin resistant, you especially want to make sure that you're avoiding these really high sugar fruits. Whereas if you're insulin sensitive and if you're exercising, making your body even more insulin sensitive, then you can be much more flexible with a lot of these fruits. Which my name's Autumn and I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition human performance. Now let's jump straight into that second fruit. And this one might seem kind of random, but it's jackfruit. Now it used to be a lot more niche. It's commonly used as a meat substitute for a lot of plant-based recipes, especially for things like shredded beef tacos. But other than the texture, jackfruit is completely different. Just one cup of jackfruit has about 32 grams of sugar, not to mention only two to three grams worth of fiber, which means you're getting a really big quick release of that sugar into the body. That's equivalent to a Starbucks vanilla latte. So if you're a plant-based and you're using jackfruit as a meat alternative, look into very low sugar alternatives instead, especially like fermented soy products like tempa. That usually is a safer route versus the non-fermented options like tofu. The third high sugar fruit that you're definitely having too much of is mango, especially now that we're we're coming into spring and almost summer, mango and like tropical types of foods are starting to become really appetizing now that it is starting to get warmer. But just like jackfruit, mango is also really, really high in sugar. Just one cup has about 31 grams of sugar. And most of that is coming from fructose, which higher levels of fructose does cause something called de novo lipogenesis or new fat creation within the body. And to make matters worse is that this fruit is often eaten dried. So it's a lot easier to consume even more of the sugar than you think that you're getting. One cup of dried unsweetened mango has about 74 grams of sugar. And although there might be some antioxidant benefits that go along with mango, this is not going to counter the really big impact that that massive amount of sugar will have on the body. You're much better off choosing berries that are going to have that pack of antioxidants while also being very, very low in sugar. Okay, the fourth one are dates. Now you're going to see this all the time in zero sugar containing food products, especially protein bars, because since it is a whole food product, it doesn't necessarily have to be listed as an added sugar, even though it's packed with sugar. Just three medjool dates, which really isn't that many dates, has about 48 grams of sugar. A king size Snickers bar, has 48 grams of sugar. And this is such a deceiving marketing tool that a lot of food companies will use by saying that there's no sugar or no added sugar, but loading up their food with dates. So just as a side note, whenever a product says no sugar, make sure you check the ingredients and make sure you actually check the sugar content that's listed in the nutrition facts. And the fifth high sugar fruit that you're definitely eating too much of are grapes. One cup of grapes has around 23 to 24 grams of sugar and only one gram of fiber. So there's really nothing to slow down that surge of sugar coming from the grapes. To keep sugar much lower, you're so much better off using about a cup of raspberries or blackberries or strawberries, all of which are going to have a roughly around seven grams of sugar. In fact, you can check out my low sugar favorite dessert recipe with this video next. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love the science backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video. Oh,